Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. Psst, I need you to come a little closer. That's better. This is solder. This is solder. Solder, solder. Now with that business out of the way, in this video we talk about low temperature solder paste. We cover what paste is, what makes it low temp, and I don't know. Let's see how it tastes. Ah, this stuff was better when there was lead in it. Two things I need to be upfront about. MG Chemicals sent me the low temp solder paste that I'm showing in this video. And the cake decorating gel that I just ate tastes terrible. Okay, before I get to why I like this low temp stuff, let's review what solder paste is. With a naked eye, solder paste looks like a gray cream. But if we look under the microscope, we can see it is made up of tiny solder balls. Not only that, but even though we call it solder paste, the paste is actually flux that suspends the solder particles. The size of those particles are rated with numbers like T1 to T6 on some kind of chart you can find somewhere else on the internet. Bigger numbers mean smaller particles that fit through smaller holes in a stencil. For reference, the MG paste I'm using has a particle size of T3, and it is usable for pitch sizes even on a QFN package. But I'll show more of that later. The flux does several things. It makes the mixture printable, distributes the solder particles evenly, tacks components into place, and cleans up the oxides and surfaces when heated. That's actually quite a few jobs for something we just call flux and then brush off. Anyway, when using paste for assemblies, we call the process reflow soldering, which happens in an oven that follows a thermal profile. That profile has key zones for preheating, heat soaking, the actual peak for the reflow, and then cooling. Industrial reflow ovens use a conveyor belt system that exposes the board to different heat zones as it moves through the oven. In my lab, I have a super advanced single stage reflow oven with a custom built Arduino based controller. That controller manages a profile similar to a real reflow oven. I know it looks a little bit silly, but hey, it works really well for me. Any electronics you buy today have been reflow soldered with solder paste, but that paste is a little bit different from the one that I'm talking about here. Just like with wire solder, paste comes with different alloys. Up until the 2000s, tin lead was the most popular. SAC 305 became the no lead favorite, and the low temp lead free stuff I'm talking about here contains tin, bismuth, and solder. Each of these alloys has a different melting point, and you can see here the bismuth solder has the lowest, so it's called low temp solder. While their reflow profile is the same basic shape, the times at the stages and the temperatures with each paste is different. Now, let's go look at some of the pros and cons of using low temp solder paste. Without any question, the low melting point makes working with the bismuth solder much easier than either of the traditional alloys. Reflow ovens do not have to run as hot, and components, especially LEDs, are not subjected to extreme temperatures. So overall, less stress. Based on some Element 14 community feedback that I received, I tried out the MG paste on a QFN package. My part of choice is an RP2040. Even with these super cheap Mylar stencils a community member makes for me, the T3 paste prints it with no problem. However, disaster struck during the reflow cycle because a bug in my controller caused it to not hit the peak temperature. So with a partially soldered board, I had to improvise. To fix it, I set the hot air tool to 225 degrees C, let the solder go liquid, and then nudge the part so that surface tension would align it. Now, even though this paste has no clean flux, I still like to clean it. And then looking at the rework, the joints look much better now. They're not perfect, but they worked well enough. And I don't actually have a clip of the board working because <clears throat> somebody forgot to add a power LED to the board. The key takeaway I can say is that if you're used to higher temperature solder alloys, you'll quickly get used to the super fast melting times. By the way, I also found a Hewlett Packard paper written around the year 2000 that recommends a bismuth based alloy for QFNs, BGAs, and other fine pitch parts. There's a link to that in the show notes over on the Element 14 community. One thing I was curious about was how the alloy would interact with a surface mounted chip. It turns out it significantly reduced the time it would normally take to remove the PLCC. Now you might say, but James, flux can do the same thing. And that's true. 
However, my hot air temperature was only around 225, maybe 250 degrees when I did that removal. Just using flux along with the 10 base solder on the original would have required more heat and time. And mostly, I was just curious if it would help. Speaking of flux, bismuth solder pastes are not as sensitive to being refrigerated. MG Chemicals does recommend refrigeration to extend the shelf life, like with any paste, but it is not strictly necessary. Which is great. I left this stuff sitting out for days while making this video, and I saw no difference from day one to, I don't know, day five. The last thing I wanted to mention is that even though bismuth is a heavy metal, it is considered non-toxic. In fact, it gets used in some products to help treat certain <clears throat> gastric issues. So if this paste has all of these advantages and it's lead free, why do we even bother to use that other stuff, SAC or SAC? While the low melting point of bismuth solder is great for reflow and reworking, it does present some challenges in application use. For example, on this boost converter board, I removed the switching regulator chip with MG Chemicals No Clean Flux. Then I put some low temp solder paste on the pads without using a stencil and applied heat. Remember that once the solder melts, surface tension helps to snap the part into place even when the paste application is messy. Once the board cooled, I applied power and drew way too much current through the regulator. With a teeny bit of force, the chip detached itself. So obviously, low temp solder is not ideal for applications where the junction can get as hot as 150 degrees C. Bismuth is somewhat brittle, which is one reason the alloy contains some silver. Here is an extreme example. I put these two edge connectors next to each other. On part of the board, I made solder blobs with MG's low temp alloy. And on the other part of the boards, I made blobs of traditional tin lead. As I bent the boards, you can see the bismuth breaks up rather easily, while the tin lead seems a little more pliable. Along with that low temperature, you need to consider how you handle a board. Bismuth solder can make removing through hole components easy because it stays liquid for so long. But while removing this connector, I tapped the board to get the header to fall out, and instead, it sprayed solder all over the PCB. But that's okay because MG Chemicals sent me some super wick desoldering braid for another video, which made it super easy to clean up. Poor product placement attempt aside, be careful when handling boards while they cool because movement can create fractures in the solder joints. Let them cool completely before touching them. Two other issues the Element 14 community warned me about were temperature and resistance. I read that when it's mixed with lead, the melting point of the new alloy drops below 100 degrees Celsius and the joint becomes brittle. So care needs to be taken when reworking a board with lead-based solders. Surprisingly, I couldn't come up with a good way to test or verify that. Now regarding resistance, stay tuned. I have an idea on how to test that in a future video. Given those cons, I am not knocking low temp solder paste in general or specifically the products from MG Chemicals. In fact, I'm going to keep using this for my prototyping projects and anytime I rework lead-free boards. That said, one thing I learned while working with this paste is that when you change your workflow, you need to do some testing. Early on with this paste, I had some really bad soldering failures because of issues with my controller and how I was applying it. But at this point, I'm getting far better results. For example, these joints all look great. From time to time, I am still getting some solder balls in both reflow and hot air because either I'm not soaking the board long enough or my reflow ramp is too aggressive. And by the way, you don't actually have to scrape the balls away. If you just wash the boards, the joints look really solid. Here's one of my favorite. As you can probably tell, I really like this bismuth-based solder for surface mount soldering. I am curious what you think about low temperature solder paste and your experiences with it. So please visit the Element 14 community to let me know. While you're there, you'll find show notes for this episode and links to the MG Chemicals products. For now, it is time for me to get back to baking PCB cookies on my electronics workbench.